It's sickening to see the new attacks on the FBI threatening the life of law enforcement agents and their families for simply carrying out the law and doing their job. There's no place in this country, no place, for endangering the lives of law enforcement. You turn on the television and see senior senators and congressmen saying, if such and such happens, there'll be blood in the street. Where the hell are we? But as I stand here tonight, equality and democracy are under assault. We do ourselves no favor to pretend otherwise. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. President Biden has been pulling no punches these last few weeks, and he certainly didn't last night. With Independence Hall as his backdrop, Biden warned about the threat to democracy posed by Trump and his MAGA movement just hours after the former president suggested he would pardon January 6th rioters if given the chance. Back with us tonight, author and historian, presidential historian Michael Beschloss. His latest work is Presidents of War. Michael, great to see you as Same one of job. the histor as one of the his historians who warned President Biden about a teetering democracy. How did he do last night? I think he did great. And by the way, uh, I should mention, we historians were not asked to give political advice. Uh, this was a month ago. We were asked to come and talk to the president about democracy, which four or five of us did for about two hours. And what President Biden, I think, did last night is it's one of the highest callings that a president can follow, and that is to warn Americans when their democracy is in danger. That's what Abraham Lincoln did in 1860 on the eve of the Civil War. That's what Franklin Roosevelt did in the 1930s when there were fascists like Father Charles Coughlin, the radio priest who was preaching the need for a Christian republic. He was saying that there should be uh, boycotts of Jewish businesses, that you didn't need elections. Roosevelt was saying fascism is a ba bad thing. Sometimes people don't li like to hear what a president says, but President Biden has seen everything that we've seen in the last couple of years, all the warning signs that have led our NBC poll to say that the biggest issue facing voters is threats to democracy. You know, Michael, the thing that I found interesting about the speech last night is that this is part of a continuing message that Biden has been giving since he announced his run for president in 2019. Right. And I bring that up because I just wonder, he brought you in to talk about democracy. But it strikes me that he, he was an eager and willing student. Was he totally. trying to figure totally. out his place in history when it comes to fighting for democracy? Uh, I think not as self-consciously as that. I think, you know, if there and, and I don't know how he used this meeting, but uh, I, I can tell you what the meeting was, was very bleak in saying that democracy is as much in danger uh, at this moment as it was in 1860 and 1940. I certainly believe that fervently. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't have a president saying to Americans, look, we've got some big problems, big issues, inflation, you know, all sorts of things, health care, taxes. But overwhelmingly, if we don't have a democracy in two years, we can't do anything about any of those. Right. You know, my colleague at The Washington Post, Eugene Robinson, wrote, Biden chose the perfect stage. But the president's critics called the event dark and divisive. How did last night's speech compare to those of past presidents? Well, per perfect question, Jonathan. Uh, I think anyone who would have heard Lincoln in 1858 saying that this nation is a house divided, half slave and half free, you can't get very much more divisive than that. Or Franklin mm -hmm. Roosevelt in the late 30s saying that there are fascists among, among us who are dangerous. Or in 1940 saying we Americans have to choose whether or not to arm ourselves to fight Hitler and the imperial Japanese. Pretty divisive, but that's part of the job. You know, I want to get you on the, the classified documents co controversy. You tweeted, mm. th those empty folders are on ominous. What else has you worried right now? Well, the first thing that has me worried is, you know, just as you're saying, Jonathan, those empty folders. Where are those documents? 
This was, you know, let's just think of the worst, and there's no evidence for this yet, but let's say that the ex-president was selling them or handing them to our enemies or even to our friends who should not have had those. Uh, he could have done that without giving the physical documents. So what makes this ominous is not only the fact that our some of our most classified national secrets have very possibly gotten into the wrong hands, but what, what was going on here that the documents have just disappeared? One of the things a great nation does is keep control of its secrets. The United States of America is a great nation. Why is this so reckless and sloppy as if it's amateur hour or worse? And Michael, it, it's the Labor Day weekend before the midterms. What are you watching for in the weeks ahead? Well, we're going to see a campaign which I think, to some extent, because of what Pre President Biden said last night, is going to be focused on the biggest issue that we face. You know, if you and I, Jonathan, were historians from the future and we came back to 2022, we'd say that the big question is, is America going to be a democracy anymore? I can't give you the answer. I wish we could. But if a president does not confront that as directly as Lincoln did in 1860 or Roosevelt in 1940, we've got a president who is not giving us the best of leadership, and I think he did last night. Michael Beschloss, it is always great to see you. You are always a great way to end the week. Thank you for coming to Thank the 11th Thank you so hour. much, Jonathan. Be well.